Rajesh. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Arun Bal for this uh, first session of uh, the series of webinars. And uh, again, we need to start with the basics. So biomechanics is very, very important in understanding diabetic foot and its management. We need to know why an ulcer occurs in the first place. And unless you correct the biomechanics, um, it is going to recur and the wound is not going to heal. Um, Professor Arunbal is my teacher and mentor and is considered to be the father of diabetic foot surgery in India. He's a senior surgeon at Raheja and Hinduja hospitals in Mumbai and a visiting professor at Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences. He is the founder president of Diabetic Food Society of India. And uh, he is also the current president of Diabetic Food Society of India. He was instrumental in uh, bringing out the indigenous models of biotheosiometry, sensitometry in our country. And he started the first Diabetic Food Fellowships in the country. It was started in Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences uh, in 2004-2005 and also at Raheja Hospitals, Mumbai. He is also the secretary of the International Association of Diabetic Foot Surgeons, which is based at Brussels. He is also vice president of the International Surgical Society for uh, limb salvage. He was presented with the 2019 MedStar Georgetown Distinguished Achievement Award uh, Diabetic Limb for Diabetic Limb Salvage and uh, at Washington. Uh, he is one of the uh, well known figures in diabetic foot salvage and management in the world. I am very happy to. Uh, introduce Professor Bal. I think now he will start uh, the session now. Sir, you can share your screen, sir. Okay, good evening. Uh, what I intend to do in uh, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes is to give you a broad overview of how what is the importance of biomechanics. So this is a, India is in the epicenter of diabetes quake. And this is a current phase of diabetes in uh, most of the Southeast Asia. Sir, we are not able to see the screen, sir. Oh, is it? One moment. Can you see now? No, sir. So like yesterday, you can share the screen. Yeah, I'm trying to share the screen. Just a minute, hold on. You can select the PowerPoint button which will come in the uh, toolbar below. Yeah. Can you see now? No, sir. I think you need to click the share screen button, sir. Okay. Green one. I think I've gone out of the Zoom. I don't know how to. Just hold on. I will re rejoin. Just a moment. Okay. So, okay. Fine, sir. Fine. Yeah, just a minute. Can you see the screen? We can see it now, sir. You can go to full screen mode, sir. Okay. Can you see full screen? Perfect, sir. Yeah, okay. Perfect, sir. So uh, I'll just go back and start from beginning. So this is uh, India is in an epicenter of diabetes quake, what is uh, known all over the world. And this is the current phase of diabetes in India. You go to any hospital where diabetic patients are treated, at least 30 to 40% patients are admitted for a feet, in, a feet problem like this. 
beautiful feet like this when diabetes strikes this is what happens and we need to know why that happens uh, then only you can prevent the tragedy as of today we have 74 million diabetic patients 148 million feet to look after and as of today we have 200000 higher level amputations 85% of them are because of infected neuropathic ulcers and they are totally preventable the cost of prevention is not more than 1000 or 1500 rupees per year so we must understand first is the foot ulcer in diabetes is complication of medical disease is not a primary surgical disease like hernia hydrocele or appendix so during evolution when human being became erect the two things happened the eyes became distant from the feet and the nerves of the leg became longer both contribute to foot problem quadrupeds require feet for a gripping ability bipeds like human being require for a support pathobiomechanical changes due to advancing peripheral neuropathy is the main etiological factor and non enzymatic glycation change the characteristics and function of all the tissues of the foot so this is algorithm all of us have learned in the school that every diabetic patients will run through this during his lifetime the major task for a prevention is to prevent the Uh, epidermal barrier from breaking down that is a skin for breaking down in spite of all deformities and everything if you do that then ulcer doesn't occur once if the ulcer occurs then the disease takes completely different turn and gets infected so regular uh, peripheral uh, uh, regular periodic examination of the both the limbs lower limbs is the important point and cornerstone of a Uh, primary and secondary prevention and uh, risk stratification in a diabetes patients so this is a dictum we must remember what you cannot measure you cannot manage so most of the times we don't see the patient walking we see the patient lying down so it is important to see the patient walking you get variety of information you may have a high step you get you may have a slippers coming out the patient may be walking with a Uh, foot ulcer comfortably that tells you a lot of information also if you find the patient is limping what is known as antalgic gait usually diabetic foot patients don't limp so it means that there is something else which is happening which then you will have to investigate so coming to biomechanics this is a average comfortable walking speed which is 1.4 uh, meters per second and these are the factors you need to find out and all these out of this two technical terms i will just uh, uh, put a definition stance is the total time when the foot is on the ground usually average it is 0.6 second and cadence is the number of steps per minute which person takes you need to see whether there is a balance fluidity uh, how the patient walks all these things you can just look at the patient then make out so seeing the patient walking in your clinic or making him walk is very important now this is one of the test very simple test which tells you whether the patient has a neurological problem it is known as a timed up and go test you ask the patient to sit in a chair and get up without taking support of a chair arms and walk 3 meters and come back and sit now if he can do within uh, 10 seconds it's normal he reaches up to 14 seconds there is abnormal below about 20 seconds there is definitely serious problem so what is the mechanism of neuropathic gait so this is a walking cycle which we have learned in physiology and anatomy there is a heel strike which goes into the mid stance and which goes into the propulsion everybody walks like that and you see this is a human foot as you see every foot has a 26 bone 29 joints why don't these bones rattle why don't they move when we run jump play that's because of a structure called plantar fascia and other ligaments which holds the foot rigidly together and you can see the axis of walking is absolutely central along the second metatarsal second toe and if you see clearly the tendo achilles does not waver at all now what happens in diabetes this is a normal if you take a x ray there is a central heel strike and there is a axis of walking which is straight 
in diabetes patient has no motor control no sensory input so foot instead of falling into the center falls either in pronation or in supination and you can see the foot is going completely medially medial malleolus is going down and it is hyperpronating so if you see the peak plantar pressure at the takeoff stage that is propulsion which is very high in a, every human being at the uh, you know in a, from early age to the elderly age the pressure is almost 600 kilopascals how much high just to give you an idea at 120 mm of systolic pressure with the 15 kilopascals all arterioles are shut off at the 6 kilopascal capillary circulation gets completely obliterated so every human foot at a propulsion stage undergoes a anoxia and ischemia but there is a instant recovery because the person has a good metabolic control and good sensory input and motor control now that delayed recovery is there in diabetes because of all these neurological factors now delayed recovery and persistent low grade anoxia means inflammation warmth and erythema which has a very great significance because if you teach the patient to feel with the back of hand the uh, plantar aspect of the fore foot and it is warmer than rest of the foot or the leg then he has reached at this stage now if you allow him to walk unlimited which he will walk because he has no sensation the next stage in physiological cascade is exudate which manifests as a blister and breaks down and forms an ulcer and you can have a simple thermometer like this which is very popular available now in pandemic and teach the patient to measure the temperature then you need to change the patient's uh, exercise schedule walking style all this we will go further and see how it is to be done now sensory motor neuropathy is always clubbed if you see a uh, ncv or emg report it says the patient has a severe sensory motor neuropathy these are two components which may not run parallelly together so sensory neuropathy causes loss of sensation inability to feel increased pressure it causes uh, loss of position sense and it causes change walking pattern and hyperpronation while motor neuropathy causes muscle imbalance weakness deformity change walking pattern and uh, increase ground contact time and hyperpronation see the foot remains on the ground at uh, the first mtp for longer than a normal walking cycle and stance limit and that's why this is a pa uh, biomechanical parameter which ultimately decides whether the skin will break it is known as a impulse loading impulse loading is a pressure multiplied by the ground contact time and you see the classical example in all hospitals where diabetic patients are lying down in the bed for variety of reasons including myocardial infarct strokes or post operative or some surgeries and you, their heel is touching the bed so there is a prolonged contact time with a low pressure still impulse loading crosses 4 to 500 kilopascals after 48 to 72 hours there is a redness followed by blister followed by gangrene so just by raising the lower end of the leg with a pillow and keep the heel hanging can prevent this tragedy so diabetic foot ulcer is a biomechanical problem and no amount of antibiotic and dressing will heal it unless you offload the ulcer bearing area and repetitive moderate force of routine unprotected walking damage the feet in the diabetes in the presence of advancing neuropathy so these are the clinical changes in the skin which you see normally and uh, dry skin turgid veins there may be in a vasculopathy loss of hairs then there is many time redness there is the nails become brittle and hard there may be callus and corns so these are skin changes variety of skin changes you see now most of the times the dermatology keep dermatologists keeps on treating them symptomatically but we need to understand this is directly related to hyperglycemia which is a basic cause of neuropathy neuropathy progression is directly related to the blood sugar any time the hba1c crosses 7 the neuropathy progression will be very fast you can have a fungal infection like this which most of the times is treated as a dry skin this is a classical diabetic plantar skin fungal infection then this is a 
bullous diverticulum which blisters occur because of a hyperglycemia then uh, you can have this sort of a this is a very classical thing which you see in a patients of end stage renal disease which when you see this picture you don't have to ask the patient it's creating in you can have a furuncle like this you can have a uh, you know uh, these uh, abscesses but what is important is that uh, you know ulcer like this uh, is uh, not because of diabetes so everything which happens in the lower limb is not because of diabetes this is a vasculitis so if you find this is not fitting in a diabetic ulcer uh, profile then you need to do a biopsy and treat it separately so the nails are like this they are brittle nails they are bruised nails they can be eggshell nails these are variety of nails which you see these are pincer nails these are hypertrophic nails this type of a nails usually where only first toe nails are dark is because of a tight shoes very narrow toe box you can have a paronychia so what is a preventive foot examination these are the uh, equipments which you need to have that is a semes weinstein filament tuning fork vibrometer biostasiometer and goniometer which is nothing except protractor in school compost boxes this is a simple test called ipswich touch test where with your index finger you touch first third and a fifth toe if the patient cannot feel two out of three then patient has a sensory loss and the foot at risk it matches exactly like a filament test If filament may not be available you can use your index finger and still detect the foot at risk so foot is a very mo uh, most energy efficient machine normal sun doesn't get corns and calluses this energy efficiency is lost in diabetes due to neuropathy so if you take a x ray once a year simple ap you can see a, a gap between first and second cuneiform normally anatomically there is no gap if you draw the lines and if you find that this angle c is normally 3 degrees is widening that is a early sign that foot is undergoing diastasis that means the mid foot is collapsing it is getting affected because of a neuropathy and this is a load triangle of how the human foot bears the weight normal weight bearing it along the second metatarsal along the tibial border second toe now when the patient is walking with a uh, improper footwear no footwear hyperglycemia advancing neuropathy the mid weight shifts to the mid foot now how to detect that the very simple test you keep the patient in supine position foot in a neutral and draw the line from tibial tubercle along the anterior border of the tibia which should normally go to the second toe if it is going laterally that means the mid foot is separating so that is what is important at this stage if you catch the patient probably you can prevent the further tragedy by giving a proper footwear and you know foot care counseling otherwise the foot collapses like this and then this is what happens you can see this will actually because of repeated small traumas the bony structure just deteriorates and this gets destructed into the so like this foot collapses so here you can see when foot balance has to be kept properly the tendon balancing for the normal walking is very important you have a, a patient suppose who has undergone a four foot amputation the foot is a biomechanical structure the fulcrum is formed by the joint pulley is formed by gastrosoleus two third of the foot is in front of the fulcrum now when you reduce the length of the foot and make it half but the strength of the pulley is same the moment patient starts walking the foot is pulled into plantar flexion patient starts walking in a on a small area and this will never heal so you need to correct the tendon uh, balancing by doing a tendo achilles lengthening or gastroc resection as we will see later on so this is a normal axis of second metatar metatarsal heads now when there is a intrinsic muscle weakness one of the toes is most commonly second toe becomes longer because and the first second metatarsal head becomes prominent and forms the ulcer Now, how do you detect which metatarsal is malaligned? Again, you keep the patient in supine position, foot in a neutral, and drop the line from each metatarsal head. Normally, it should touch the 
heel skin if it falls in front of the skin heel skin that metatarsal is mal aligned and needs protection it's likely to form a callus so these are the angles you need to measure normally the extension of the first toe in a standing position is 15 degrees now under the first toe there is a pad of fat here when diabetic neuropathy and non enzymatic glycation causes what is known as a limited joint mobility because of a fibrosis of the first toe joint capsule when all the toes are moving the first toe doesn't move but the pad of fat slips forward and the toe is covered with a neuropathic skin and then you get a calluses so this is a windlass mechanism of a neuropathic foot where you can see the medial arch is not fully working and then that is why ultimately you get a calluses on the first toe and that's why majority of the diabetic foot ulcers are uh, in the region of the first mtp joint now many times you don't have to see that also if you are observant and see the patient's close shoes if patient is wearing close shoes i think all of us have experienced that when you purchase a new close shoes within few weeks there are horizontal creases like this that happens because all the mtp joint move together when one is moving late there is a oblique crease like this so if you are observant you can do that and then you know that patient has a limited joint mobility of the first toe and he is heading for an ulcer now what biomechanical examination you can do see normally you need to always measure the circumference of the calf if one calf circumference is less than the other calf then that means diabetic neuropathy cannot cause unilateral loss of muscle then there is some spinal problem so you need to be very much aware you need to see how the patient is standing this is a neuropathic foot these are the toe deformities occur and prominence of dorsal tendon because of weakness of intrinsic muscles dilated dorsal veins which tells you about the neuropathy when uh, you have uh, technology to measure sensory loss there is no easy technology to measure motor loss motor uh, neuropathy because uh, this is all high tech but the simple test keep the patient in supine position foot in neutral ask him to hold your index finger between first and second toe uh, tightly and you try to pull if he allows you to pull easily there is a poor flow uh, power if he bends the toes and holds it it is a moderate power if he holds it tightly with the toes straight then it is a good motor power so it's a very simple test now again many times you have unilateral edema unilateral edema in diabetic patients is actually also strong predictor of a charco foot but whether it is a lymphatic edema or charco edema how do you detect this is a stemmer's test if you can pick up the skin on the dorsum of the second toe with uh, by two fingers then it is not lymphedema in a lymphedema like this you cannot pick up a skin so it's a very simple clinical test this is known as a colman block test to find out about the malfunction of the post tibialis posterior tendon now many times as i told you tendo achilles has to be corrected but whether it is a tendo achilles or it is a gastrocnemius fibrosis fascia fibrosis uh, which is preventing the foot from uh, you know being fully on the uh, floor you have this test where you can see here the patients in spite of knee, knee being straight the extension of the ankle is limited the moment you flex the knee which relaxes the gastrocnemius the extension increases in that case you need to do the gastroc resection so this is a medial column collapse of the foot this is known as a too many toe signs see normally if you see the patient normal person from behind uh, you should not be able to see lateral toes if you see them then it is a medial co column collapse of the foot this is a single uh, heel lift skin that is again same for medial column collapse test and this is a fixed varus of the foot so this is another simple test clinically you can teach your paramedics to do it to find out whether the axis of subtalar joint is deviating so what what you need to do is hold with your thumb and index finger the fifth mtp joint and with the other hand uh, posterior medial part of the uh, heel 
and then keeping the foot uh, four foot and a heel congruous you go on shifting your thumb so the foot starts changing the position and you keep on marking this at every time where the foot changes with a, a ball point pen this way and when you keep on marking like this one after another at least four points when you get you can see the axis is deviating the normal axis as i told you is along the second uh, to axis which is changing and causing deviation this of course need little training to the paramedics and they can easily judge it so footwear examination is very important in the part of a biomechanics which is usually uh, either missed or misunderstood you can see the hawaii slippers like this or what is called abroad flip flops patient is sitting the moment he stands and starts walking he is holding the strap so tightly because of intrinsic muscle weakness so either he is likely to get a web space uh, injury or early deformity of the toe the narrow toe box of the shoes which is likely to cause damage to the toes because the medial arch usually will widen and foot becomes broader so all these shoes like this have to be have to have a good support to the foot so footwear selection has to be properly supervised so this is the dictum we must remember faster the gait higher the pressure longer the stride higher the pressure so if the physicians tell the patients to walk briskly non stop for 45 minutes without checking the level of neuropathy then the four foot pressure is bound to cross 500 to 700 kilopascals and then it will create a uh, what i showed earlier a pressure anoxia and exudate formation and breakdown and form an ulcer so we should teach the patient of diabetes to measure the distance in minutes not in kilometers because then only patient you can prevent the ulcers and the four foot problems so patients with these condition like insensate foot deformed foot you know foot ulcer previous ulcer should not do all these exercise you need to change the exercise schedule of the patient so adequate and pro, uh, you know proper understanding of peripheral diabetic neuropathy and altered biomechanic is essential for prevention of a higher level amputation so diabetic foot patients are vulnerable and cause of their vulnerability is neuropathy immunopathy altered biomechanics so you have a very narrow window of opportunity to prevent the loss of limb as of today we don't use this window of opportunity because we have a unwritten policy of no complaint no examination diabetic foot is a syndrome of medicine you can see a patient of a infected diabetic foot spends 50% of his annual income on treatment this is a 3 minute examination uh, advocated by american diabetic association so if you can teach your paramedic this 3 minute examination you can easily risk stratify the patients these are the preventive diabetic foot clinic started by the diabetic foot society of india about 12 to 13 years back in a four public sector hospital across india fully managed by paramedics without doctors who counsel the patient evaluate the foot do the callus debridement give footwear everything all preventive measures so i showed you this picture i call these patients of foot attack so you, this is a dictum very famous chinese saying that mind is like a parachute uh, it does not work unless it is open so amputation prevention in 21st century is team technology and tenacity so you we have acute coronary units almost even in a non metro cities you have a stroke unit so you need to have a very comprehensive acute diabetic foot care units because we need to utilize this narrow window of opportunity because time is a tissue unless you save the time or you lose more time the tissue is going to get damaged and you need to check the circulation even in a smallest toe wound so this is a concept of toe and flow so however small wound in foot of a patient of a diabetes you need to measure the vascularity so callus is like a benign breast lump you cannot leave it it has to be removed also important is that as i said at the beginning the diabetic foot ulcer is a complication of medical disease 
which is going to be remaining lifelong. It's not going to end in spite of all data about uh, bariatric surgery and weight reduction surgery. Still, the disease does not go. It only gets controlled. So you need to, uh, I think, uh, tell the patient to come for regular follow-up. So what we need to do is to bring in the concept of cure is equivalent to remission. As you know that patients of oncology, uh, cancer, other you know, cancer-related problems regularly go religiously for follow-up because they know they have a fear that this will recur. I think we need to bring in this concept undergraduate, postgraduate education, also in a family physician training, that there is really no cure for diabetic foot ulcer. You have to keep the patient in remission, so you need to bring in the concept of five-year ulcer-free survival. And unless you bring it, the patients will keep on coming and getting infected and get into problem. And so rapid closure of the wounds is very essential. You have to use all your knowledge and you know modern wound technique to close the wounds early because if you keep the patient immobile for longer time it is a strong risk factor for cardiovascular system so activity and mobility is equivalent to longevity and this has been now proved over the last three four years with many studies that longer the patient is uh, immobile higher is the death rate So when we have millions of patients, footwear is the only strategy to prevent the loss of limb in diabetes as far as Southeast Asia is concerned. So what you need is a pair of eyes and hands. That's all you need. You don't need any technology. With your eyes and hands, you can do the basic work and preventive work and prevent the loss of limb. On a lighter vein, as more and more mobiles are used, India has the highest number of mobile as of today. 750 million persons are using mobile. As I said earlier, when human being became erect, the biomechanics changed. Now, are we going to reverse it back to the earlier age with your use of technology and mobile? Only time will tell. And I'd like to end by showing you this famous Sanskrit saying, which means that one who walks is fortune march ahead. I think we want all those millions of patients' fortunes to march ahead. So we need to keep their feet intact. Thank you. Okay, Rajesh. Okay, Rajesh, can we have any questions? Rajesh? Anybody from IJCP? Uh, sir, yeah, I'm back, sir. I'm back. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Um, sir, that was a very nice presentation. I think you have explained about the importance of biomechanics in diabetic foot management. Um, I think a number of questions have come up, uh, some related to this uh, topic, some not related to this topic, but related to diabetic foot. I think the other questions which are not related to this, I think I will take up when that comes. Uh, I think one question by Dr. Mohammed Shakir is importance of biomechanics in diabetic foot, uh, diabetic patient. So I think you have answered that very well. No, sir. Yeah. Do you want to add anything more for that, sir? No, I think, uh, as I said earlier, this aspect of clinical biomechanical examination should go into undergraduate, postgraduate uh, medical surgical training. Uh, and you need to have a cadre of paramedics who will do this. Doctors cannot do all this. That's not possible anywhere. I, as you know, except Amruta Institute in Bombay, there is uh, really no training of paramedics to do all these things. But this needs to be widely propagated. And unless physicians start checking biomechanics, 
the surgical problems cannot be solved because as i said this ulcer occurs because of a neuropathy unless you you know estimate the neuropathy level uh, nothing for, further can be done to prevent the ulcer and india indian patients are majority of the indian out of those 74 million patients are in the age group of 35 to 55 so uh, they are more uh, neuropathic patients than uh, you know peripheral vascular disease patients so that's why you have to focus on the neuropathy and this is the simple method see also i find that now people are so fond of and enamored by the technology they get all these gadgets but getting gadgets and uh, you know not doing clinical examination has no meaning so good clinical examination i think uh, you know uh, i would like to quote william osler who said in 18th century that listen to the patient and he is telling you the diagnosis so i think you need to talk to the patient see how he is walking what is his style of walking can he climb down the stairs easily or he needs a support can he get up from the chairs without support i think these are the simple you need to spend some time and i think that can be done by paramedic even if doctors are busy so you need to have a good paramedic training uh dr ravi kumar uh, he wants to know um what should you advise for a patient of low socio economic status for offloading of pressure sir see if it is a patient who is from low socio economic strata the simple thing is you can have an adhesive felt pad uh, with a central cut out which you can put on the foot and allow the patient to wear the footwear but there has to be some uh, you know uh, advice to the patient counseling as i said he cannot use hawaii slippers he has to preferably use sandals and these sandals have to be used indoor outdoor and this pad needs to be changed every two or three days so that can offload the callus but if the callus is there you need to debride that and removing the callus does not require any surgical training what you need need only a 10 number surgical blade 3 number handle spirit swab and you can train a paramedic within one day to scale the callus so if callus is a pressure point the pressure at the callus point is 30 times more than surrounding area so it will break callus is a precursor of ulcer or it hides the ulcer so you need to scale it and offload it it's a simple way of doing is either make the insole correction in the footwear with a mcr insole or give a adhesive felt pad to offload the ulcer which i believe will be uh, discussed in the next series of lectures oh. pardon sir this offloading will be yeah, yeah. discussed we'll be in the other lectures now yes sir uh, dr shankar reddy wants to know about the recent advances in big mechanical in, in mechanical screening of foot at risk see there are a lot of things like for example if you want the very very high tech uh, arizona institute of podiatry has developed something like a tmt which is done for the uh, heart testing they have developed a treadmill test to detect the biomechanics of the foot which measures many parameters 10 to 12 parameters of the foot and high pressure areas and gives you a print out like what you get for the tmt now these are the things which are not going to be available in india for a foreseeable future you have a uh, you know pressure pads you have a pedographs which are there in uh, many metro city hospitals but that again has to be correlated clinically you have to clinically find out what is happening and then correlate it with a pedograph just looking at a pedograph report you cannot give a footwear or advise the patient so all this high tech equipment is adjuvant to your clinical examination hello yeah um dr ganga prasad jakani he wants to know how to prevent a diabetic foot in patients with uncontrolled type 2 dm see as uh, i said earlier that neuropathy progression is directly related to hyperglycemia this has been proved by 
uh, UK PDS, DCCT trials many years back and many other trials. So unless the patient controls uh, blood sugar and if HbA1c the, you know, goes on high like 8, 9, 10, uh, neuropathy is inevitable. As of today, nobody has found out any modality to stop the neuropathy. So if the neuropathy progresses, the two things happen. Patient will start getting paresthesia, that is a pain because of neuropathy. And slowly he will start developing motor weakness, sensory loss. And then he, if he doesn't take care, he's heading for the foot ulcer. So control of diabetes is the primary cause or modality for uh, preventing the or controlling the neuropathy. And if you control the neuropathy and if the patient takes care of his foot and wears the uh, proper footwear, doesn't walk barefoot uh, and uh, you know doesn't apply hot fermentation, cold compresses for neuropathic pain, then he should be okay. Hello? Yeah. Yes, sir. Then one more question on if there is a microvascular disease, uh, what will you do? See, microvascular disease in the foot is a you know, very hot topic now in discussion all over the world. You may do angioplasty of anterior tibial, posterior tibial, popliteal, but if the foot microvascular disease is there, Usually the ulcers don't heal in this uh, type of a patient and they get severe pain. So now the recent data is to measure what is known as a SAD and a MAC index, small artery disease index and medial, calci uh, medial arterial calcification index. And this has to be done by endovascular specialist by measuring the diameter of the vessels and create an index. If the index is below 30, then that foot ulcer is not likely to heal. And most of these patients land up with a uh, higher level amputation. But microvascular disease is directly related to hyperglycemia. Uh, so I think uh, those are the main questions which have been asked. Sir. Yeah. So... I think in that case, uh, we'll call this meeting to an end, I think, sir, if there are no okay. more questions. Okay. And uh, I think the organizers will be uh, informing the participants the next date of the uh, next lecture. So thanks a lot for this opportunity. And I would like to thank Professor Ball for giving a wonderful lecture. And thanks to all the participants for joining us and asking very nice questions. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Chitra, what uh, you want to say something? Anybody from IJCP? I think... Uh... Yes, sir. Yeah, so you want to announce the uh, next uh, lecture's date or you will inform separately? We'll inform separately, sir. Okay, fine. Okay, then then we close now, okay? Is that okay with you? Sorry, sir, I couldn't uh, yeah, hear you. No, uh, then we can close. Is that okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Yeah.